Mi nombre es Francisco Andrés Aguilar Moraga. Soy nicaragüense y esta es mi historia. I come from a, a little piece of heaven called Nicaragua. It's a, it's a beautiful country filled with beautiful people, palm trees, oceans on both sides, volcanoes and lakes. Nicaragua, it's a, it's a country that's known for a lot of beautiful things, but it's also a country that's known for civil unrest, political unrest, wars, civil wars. I came here to the U.S. as an immigrant back when I was a child. My father had been here already since a year prior to me coming up here. He was living in New York City. He had every job that you can mention, the construction. He was a, wait a waiter, he fixed cars. He worked very hard for about a year and a half to get his family up here. About a year later, we, uh, we received the news that he had enough money to, uh, to get us up there. And uh, we hopped on a plane and landed in uh, Mexico City. From Mexico City, I remember being a kid, it was like 16 of us, uh, a lot of children and women, but I remember that it was 16 of us at least. And I remember driving a bus from Mexico City all the way to Tamaulipas, Mexico, which is a, a border state, Reynosa, which is the city. Uh, once there, I remember staying at a hotel, I remember waking up early, maybe four o'clock in the morning and crossing the river with my mom and my aunt, my cousins, and everyone else that came with us. It was 16 of us. The youngest must have been like two years old, maybe one. I must have been like six or seven. I remember when we first crossed, the first thing we saw was a gas station. It was all in English. That's how you knew you were in the United States. That's how you knew you had reached the promised land. Coming up here was difficult as a child. The culture shock, the language, the race, how you were viewed by others, how you were viewed by your own kind. It was something that as a child, any child should not be exposed to, but I was. We're talking early 80s. We lived in Miami, Florida. My mom worked at a factory job. My dad worked at a, uh, driving a construction concrete truck and we made ends meet. And I lived in Miami till I was 15. The economy went bad. My dad couldn't get a job. We were struggling. They said it's time to go back to Nicaragua. That was a moment where I remember we're going back to Nicaragua. I was 15 years old. I had been here since I was seven. So I might've been in the States for about nine years, about eight or nine years. And it was time to go back to Nicaragua. I didn't know how I felt about that. My father got a phone call from one of his friends in Ohio saying, come live in Ohio, we got jobs, come live in Ohio. Next thing you know, we're in a station wagon and we ate rice and beans the whole way up here with crackers. Rice and beans with crackers. Gallo Pinto. And we journeyed up to Ohio. It took us about two days and a half maybe. When we got here, it was like everything looked American. It wasn't Miami anymore. We're in America. For some odd reason, Ohio seemed more American than Miami. And I felt like I was in America. My first school here in Ohio was Woodward in 92. Met a couple of people there. My English was horrible. I met people with last names that were like similar to mine, Spanish last names that didn't speak Spanish. Met some teachers that were really cool and really nice. Transferred to Way High School, graduated from Way High School.
day started off with any like any other day. I remember waking up in the morning, getting ready. Just another daily routine. I had uh, talked to my mother about seeing her for my birthday, and we were very excited about doing that. I was really looking forward to it. It was something that I wanted to do, and I wanted to document the whole thing. I wanted to go over there and document the story of me reconnecting with my family. But that was not to be the case. I was talking to my mother a couple of times and she had really getting very sick to the point where I was no longer talking to her and I was actually talking to my brother, my brother, Walter. Walter Montenegro Moraga. Walter was living in Costa Rica and working and sending money to Nicaragua. But when she got really, really sick, he had to come back home and take care of her. One of those phone calls that I got was no longer from my mother and it was from Walter. And it was basically telling me that my mother had passed away. I couldn't believe it. I had just, I was just on the phone with her. We, we spoke, I sent some money. I told her to wait for me. She said she was going to wait for me. I called my little brother Penny here in the States. He came over, we spoke, I told him what had happened. And a journey of celebration turned into a journey of something else. I had to get ready. Gather all my stuff, passport, ID, social security cards. We're crossing borders, international borders. After discussing this with my brother, I called my sister here in the States and I told her uh, that I needed help. And she was, she was willing, she was there for me. She was there for me. She said, I have a friend of mine that he's never been to New York City and uh, he'll drive us there. And the reason why I had to go to New York was because I couldn't fly out of Detroit. My passport had been expired and it would take a lot of paperwork to get it, to get it overnight. It was just impossible. So the best way to do it was to get my clothes together, get all my luggage together, get all my, my documents, get on the road and drive to New York City, go to the Nicaraguan consulate, get a temporary passport, travel from New York to Miami, from Miami to Nicaragua, and in Nicaragua, get a permanent passport. But that was not easy. It's easier said than done. There was a lot of steps and there was a lot of things that needed to be done. We hopped in my sister's friend's car and we rode out to New York City. Nine hours of drive, rode nine hours of snow, nine long hours, but it was necessary. It's necessary to do these things. And while I was driving, all I kept thinking was, what's gonna happen when I get there? What am I really doing? And am I ready for this? I'm the oldest of both families. And everybody looks at the oldest, for all the answers. And the oldest doesn't look at nobody because he's the oldest. And you always have to have that face. The face of, I got it all figured out, but you really don't know what you're doing. I got to New York, I called my cousin up, and once again, family. She said, sure thing, cousin, you can come stay with us. Got there, and it was all love, hugs, kisses, dinner, and everything was just there for me, and I just can't thank them enough, my New York family. I love them with all my heart. 
I got my stuff together. My sister went and bought me a ticket. We we got the passport situation situated. Bought a ticket online. Rushed out to the airport that same day. Got all my luggage. I say goodbye to my sister. I say goodbye to all my cousins over there from New York. Well, hopped on that plane to Miami, Florida. Good old MIA. But MIA is not home. It was just more of a hub. We still got a long ways to go. And all I can think of is getting to Miami and walking down that airport and you can just smell the heat. You can just smell it. But you're only one step closer to the motherland. And I just remember being there, looking at all the airplanes, looking up at the ceilings in the airport, looking at how majestic things are here in the US, looking at how much we take things for granted here. And that's not how things are over there. Over there is real. Everything is real. And thinking, I'm one step closer to home. I'm one st step closer to burying my mother. I'm one step closer to seeing my siblings. And I'm just sitting there looking at that plane. And then I'm inside the plane and it gets more real. And thus my homecoming begins. I'm coming home, mother. I'm coming home. Seems like I never left. Two years later, I'm home. But I'm not here to travel and have fun and have a blast and go to a resort. I'm here to bury my mother. The cemetery, they're not like the cemeteries here in the US. The cemeteries, they seem a little more real. They seem, there's more emotion in them. Every rose, every leaf, every flower that's placed on these graves, they seem to have more passion. Even the poorest of graves with just a tire rod on it in the shape of a cross sí. it means so much. And it's not that the people in my country love each other more than the people here in the U.S. love each other. It's just a whole different world. It's just a whole different way of doing things and showing love. And we buried my mother, came back home. And I remember looking at the walls and looking at the pictures. And I'm saying, this is my family. That's me. That's my sister. That's my brothers. That's my mother. That's, that's the father of her two little youngest kids. This was her house. The people in the neighborhood, they know her. She lived here for over 20 years. And I'm the one, the one son that no one's ever seen. And they're staring and the little kids are pointing. They don't know who I am. What, what is this guy doing here? And I'm constantly answering the question. I'm her oldest. I'm Martha's oldest son, Francisco. And I come from the States. And they're like, oh, you look just like her. And it's true, I do. And we all do. 
All my siblings look just like her. We all have a little bit of her in us. It was different. And this time I'm here to be there for them. This time I'm here to show them that I care, that I love them. Even though I don't know them, but it's the blood that draws us together. So, we stayed up uh, and talked about a lot of things and we decided to do family outings while I was down there. I remember going down, hopped in those buses, loud music, crowded, but it didn't matter because I was with my family. It doesn't matter if it was 120 degrees with no wind, I was with my family. And it didn't matter where I was at because I was with my family. And everywhere I went, I went with my family. We visited Leon, one of the most beautiful cities over there. One of the oldest cathedrals in Latin America. Beautiful architecture. It's like time traveling. It's something out of this world. It's something that we're not used to. It's peaceful. And it's just beautiful. The skies are always blue. It was the first day of school for the children, so there was children everywhere in their uniforms, blue and white. And you see them everywhere, and they were just happy to go to school. And I was just like, wow, and some of the kids here in the U.S., <laughs> they don't even want to go to school. I remember being a kid myself, didn't want to go to school. And these kids, all they want to do is be given a fair shot. And so, me and my brother, Walter, the one that took care of her, the one that was with her to her last breath, decided to journey out and see different things. I wanted him to show me the country. And then you meet the locals. And I came across this guy who was shown upon by the rest of the, the rest of the city because he was the quote unquote, the town drunk. And I sat down and spoke to him and talked to him and he asked him to tell me his story and he told me his story and he wanted liquor and I said, I don't want to give you liquor, man. Okay. I'm gonna give you food, I'm gonna feed you, but I wanna do it because I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I bought him something to eat, and even though he was with me, they were still looking at him like he was a nobody, but this is somebody, this is a human being. And I remember walking those streets with him and it was so hot and his feet had blisters and he had blood coming down his feet because he was barefoot. And after I fed him, I remember I went, we went to the local market and I said, what size shoes you wear? And he told me what size and I bought him a pair of shoes. Yeah, they weren't expensive shoes. They weren't J's or they weren't anything that people brag about here, but they were shoes, shoes that made this man cry. I gave him a hug and I never saw him again. But that was the day I learned what it's like to be a human. Two strangers met. Two strangers from different coordinates come across in the middle of somewhere and they interact with each other and that's what being a human being is all about. And I heard this man's story and it's just beautiful. Everybody's interacting with everybody. Everybody is being a human. Something that we forgot about out here. I don't even remember the last time I said good morning to my neighbor and that's part of it is my fault. Something we have to change. We must learn to be humans again. We must learn to have that human connection. It's in the Bible. 
Love thy neighbor. Love one another. But we don't. And it's like children. They're so innocent and we lost our ways. We lost our innocence. <laughs> Oh, one of the modes of transportation in Nicaragua is uh, it's the buses. And no, they're not these fancy buses with air conditioner or, you know, they, they're not even nothing like the buses we have here in Toledo, Ohio, you know, the public transportation buses. These are, these are buses that uh, people from Nicaragua buy from the United States of America. Yes, yes, we are traveling in children buses in Nicaragua. Yes, that is right. They get souped up to meet the needs of uh, the people over there. Uh, you'll have an old lady that will jump in the bus with a chicken. You'll have uh, an old man that will carry like 20 bags filled with clothes. So these buses are, are designed to be able to carry these things or to, to cater to these uh, clients. So the buses are pretty much uh, public school buses that are no longer uh, used here because of fiscal, whatever public school systems in whatever city. So they usually have to get rid of the old buses to use up the money for that fiscal year and buy new buses. So what they do is uh, they auction these buses in these places and you'll have people from Latin America come you'll have people from Latin America come up to these auctions and buy these buses and well that's how we ended up with these buses in Nicaragua and so what you see in some of my travels is me traveling in school buses which is not the most comfortable way to travel but I tell you what it gets you from point A to point B you'll also have uh, your your public vendors who will come in the buses and they'll try to sell you from chiclets to medicine that you've never heard of you'll have your preachers who are out there they'll, they'll preach and then they'll pass a little ad around so you can throw a little money in the mix or you'll have your 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 singers they'll a guy will force himself into the bus and whip out his guitar and play music for the next two hours and you're like it's just Nicaragua that's the flavor that's what it's all about and this is part of the travel this is part of the journey this was part of the homecoming one of the things that I always found interesting to me is it's the way of life here in the United States and don't get me wrong, I am not dogging the system that we have here going on. Because guess what? It works for me. It works for you. But to ignore other systems or to say that this system is better than the other, than other systems without having even experienced other systems, it's pretty much irresponsible. Not all Nicaragua, it's primitive. You know, there's a lot of modern stuff going on over there. They get the same movies we get over here may think we don't they don't get over there they get over there they might the only difference is they may have subtitles in spanish but it's all the same one of the words that I, i've always liked and i learned from some of the courses i took at the university of Toledo is globalization and there's the ability to transcend borders and bring cultures together so one of those is the pop culture music you hear hip-hop same music we hear here they hear it over there but sometimes you have to go to the, the most rural places to see what life is really about. And one of the, the, the places where my mother was from is a very rural area. I mean, you have to go to use the internet. You have to, uh, you go to, go to an internet cafe and you have to pay some money and cause there's barely any places that have Wi-Fi. But just going back to, uh, living a life of, uh, living a comfortable life well it's not comfortable over there you gotta do your own dishes and you gotta wash your own clothes it doesn't make it doesn't mean you're a caveman it just means people do things don't get me wrong i wouldn't want to wash dishes and, and and wash my own clothes and do all the things that they do over there i'm not gonna shy away from it i'm not gonna say i'm too good to do it
So yeah, I did that. I washed my own clothes. My own drawers, my own shorts, t-shirts. Put a little music on. You do what you gotta do. And you know what? It's good. It's good exercise. You know, I feel like I lost maybe a couple of ounces. It's always good to go back to to basics. It's always good to go back to basics. It's always, it's always good to remind yourself that, you know, if, if, if something was to happen, I can still survive because I can still do things on my own. I don't really need to depend too much on, on, on machines or computers or whatnot. Now, do I want to do things on my own all the time? No. But if it goes down to that, I can always do that. I can always do that. One of the most beautiful things about the city of Leon, like I stated before, is uh, it's just, it's that Leon, it's, it's located in Nicaragua, which I said previously, it's a it's a little piece of heaven in Central America. Uh, Leon is a it's a city known for being one of the oldest cities in Latin America. So the architecture in Leon, it's it's very remarkable. It's a uh, it's beautiful. In fact, uh, the buildings are. Some of those buildings were built in 1641. I mean, they'll even have uh, the encryption on them. And it's like, it's amazing how these buildings have uh, withstood the test of time. Like, who knows how many hurricanes and volcanoes have erupted and earthquakes. And who knows how many things have happened in, in that area. But uh, when I look at these buildings and they're just sitting there, you know, it, it just amazes me that, you know, th these buildings in Leon have withstood a lot of earthquakes and hurricanes and whatever else uh, comes comes at them one of the one of the greatest buildings in there is la catedral de leon which is the 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 cathedral in leon la catedral la concepcion and that's the name of the cathedral in spanish it is very beautiful i mean you see paintings there from the 1800s from the 1600s oil original oil paintings from artists from europe spain italy and it is one of the most beautiful buildings i have ever seen and i've seen some beautiful buildings i've been to new york city i've been to chicago i've been to mexico i've been to canada 
I've seen I've seen beautiful buildings, but and I'm not saying that this is the best beautiful building that I've ever seen, but I'm saying this building is it's amazing, it's awesome. So I, I went upstairs and they had this little narrow tunnels that you had to go up through and we made it all the way to the top and when we went to the top we we looked outside on the rooftop and it's all white and it's like walking on a cloud. I mean, it's heavenly. I don't know if they did that on purpose or not, but it's just, it's beautiful. And then the background, far, far away. If you focus, you can see these, what looks like pyramids, but they're not pyramids, they're volcanoes. These are natural things. These are not man-made things. Volcanoes are natural, but they're so perfect. They're so triangular in shape but it's like a perfect triangle that it's amazing how, how that happened I don't know we don't have skyscrapers in Nicaragua we don't have skyscrapers but we have things that scrape the skies and these are volcanoes they're huge they're massive and you can see you can spot a volcano from anywhere in Nicaragua no matter where you're at you will see one and you just have to look far enough and you'll see a volcano and it's just beautiful it, it, these are like massive titans just just watching over the land it's, it's beautiful uh, the cathedral itself it's it's a compliment to this volcano uh, it's they put these thing they, they put this uh th this thing on the rooftop uh, this white thing on the rooftop to keep it cool so you were able me and my brother were able to walk on the rooftop barefooted and at first I thought I was gonna burn my feet because it must have been like 110 degrees out there that day but that material that they have there it's actually to cool the rooftop and you can walk barefooted and the actual rooftop was actually cool in temperature they have these two massive giants holding these bells and they're called Titans those guys were called Titans and they just look amazing and the whole situation there was amazing that cathedral I mean I can't stop talking about it and, and, and bragging about it because the thing is just beautiful and I, I advise anybody to, uh, that loves to travel if they ever go to Nicaragua to go visit Leon and, uh, and go to that cathedral and I, I, it'll blow your mind it's just a beautiful thing what they got going on there well we were up in the rooftop we went up to the second level of the rooftop and I remember uh, we were overlooking you know we were looking at the the horizon and like I said you can see the volcanoes and it's just beautiful but then I came across a part of the rooftop where my brother pointed and he said do you see that over there and I said what what that building and he said yeah that that building right there that's uh that's where uh, that's where our, our mother died. That's the hospital she was she was in. Yeah. That's where uh, we came and picked her up from her body. And that was very. Uh, I, I didn't even know what hospital my mother had passed away in up until that point. You know that's amazing that you know my brother knew these things. He basically took over the family while I'm the oldest and traditionally the oldest person is the one that's supposed to do these things. But since I wasn't there, he took it upon himself to be that guy. And so, you know, the best the best thing that I could do at that point is, is try to spend some time with him and show him some love and letting him know that, you know, what, what you did was remarkable and commendable. And I just want to be able to take you out and you know get you get you something to eat and and show you things and that was my way me traveling with him was my way of thanking him me traveling with him was my way of of letting him know that I was appreciative of what he had done it wasn't an easy task but uh he did it
after we left uh, Leon, you know, I decided to reconnect also with my sister, my little sister over there. I've always had uh, issues with that. It's just the way I was raised. Uh, not too close to my sister in the States. I love her to death, but it's just have to work on that. This is some of the things that maybe this is the reason why I took up on this journey. So I took it upon myself to ask my sister to in Nicaragua to go travel with me. Get on one of these buses with me. And I said, where do you want to go today? And she said, I've never been to Granada. Granada, Nicaragua, it's another beautiful city. And so I've never been to Granada either. So, you know, the journey took us a whole entire day. We got on one little bus. The one little bus turned into another bus. The other bus turned into another bigger bus. And then next thing you know, we got to Granada, which is a very, very cultural city. A lot of poetry, colorful buildings, very beautiful. Right next to the lake, it is a very beautiful city. Now, Granada and Leon are two of the most ancient cities in Nicaragua. Politically, they don't get along. It's always been some type of rivalry. And it's, it's good, it's, I see now why there is, because they're both similar to each other and they're different from each other. Uh, artistically speaking, they're pretty much similar. A tale of two cities. You know, that's real though, man. You know why? Because one, Granada's always been known to be uh, Leon's always been liberal, you know what I mean? And that's always been conservative. That's just the way it's always been. The majority, you know? So they've always, and they're both on different uh, shores of the lake. Uh, one is on the bigger lake and the other one's on the little lake. One of my last trips uh, that I wanted to make was uh, was to go to the beach. So I asked my brother, Walter, the one that took care of my mom's, I says, hey man, you ever been to the beach? He says, I never been to the beach. I said, man, I'm gonna take you to a nice place. San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua, Centro America. San Juan del Sur is just a beautiful beach. It's like being in Rio or something. You have mountains on both sides of the the bay and you have hotels. Yes, it's not as glamorous, no, it's not, but it's beautiful. You have this little statue, well, it's not little, but it looks little from far away of Jesus just protecting Nicaragua from whatever could come at her. And you have all these boats just sitting on the shoreline and people are just sitting there laid back, enjoying a beer or whatnot, enjoying the scenery, just having fun. And so I took him there and he was like, wow. And I asked him, I said, well, you know why I brought you here? And he was like, nah. I said, I brought you here because I wanted you to know that I appreciate everything that you did for my mom bathing her, changing her, washing her. To the last minute you were there and I wasn't able to be there. And I told him that I appreciated all that. And even though I didn't know her like that, how he knew her, I felt like what he did was something very special. And as we walked down the shoreline and we talked about life I wanted to be, make sure that he knew, that I knew, that what he had done was something very special and it meant a lot to me. And that morning we talked about everything. We talked about everything that we two brothers could possibly talk about. We talked about life, relationships, brotherly love, the future, plans. And it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing to be able to connect with another family member on that level. It was a beautiful thing to show love and let people know that, you know what, you're loved, you're appreciated. 
we forget sometimes to do that. We take everything for granted, and sometimes we don't even say thank you. Most of the time, we don't even show it. And so the least I could do is take my brother out to the beach, take him out to the ocean, have him look at the waves, look at the sky, look at the mountains, just have him enjoy that fresh, that fresh air. And something I'll never forget. Something that I'll never forget. But the journey is not over. The homecoming is not over. There's going to be a continuation to this. I will come back to Nicaragua. It's something that it's in my blood. I will come back to Nicaragua. And San Juan, I will always come back to San Juan del Sur. My trip, my homecoming was over. It was time to hop on that plane and get back home, back to Ohio. Cause they say the heart of it all, I say, that's where the heart is. Back home, back where my family is. You see, I have many families. I have family in Nicaragua, family in New York, family in Ohio, family in Florida. And what would be without family? Family is like a portrait. It's like a finished portrait. It's like all the pieces come together when they need to come together. And then you see it. Then you see it. In the beginning, when you're young, you don't see it. Things don't make sense. But as you get older, the pieces of the portrait come together. And then you see everything. And then you admire it. And you look at it and you say, this is what it's all about. There's a sense of uh, tranquility. There's a sense of peace. When you experience what I've experienced, it all makes sense all of a sudden. You wake up in the morning and you take, you take your time. You enjoy the simplest things in life. The morning sunshine, coffee, your daily routine is not so robotic or so hectic anymore. You get up, you take a deep breath, you stretch, you look out the window, you hear the birds chirping and it may sound fake, but it's not. It's real, it's how I feel. And if it wasn't for everything that I've been through this year, it wouldn't have gotten me here. I wouldn't be as appreciative. I wouldn't be as spiritual. And so another day, and it's another day to do the same thing that I've been doing for almost 10 years, getting up, brushing my teeth, drinking my coffee, 
getting ready, going to work. But there's one different this time. I realized this time that this daily routine is different because now I appreciate things. It's not the hectic daily routine, it's the more the appreciative Francisco doing his daily routine. Francisco who appreciates nature, Francisco who appreciates family. And everything just becomes better. Everything just becomes a lot better. It makes more sense. You're, you're all of a sudden you're more relaxed. You're more in tune with nature. And I'm going to work from nine to five. But now I'm enjoying my music. Now I'm taking my time. And now I'm just glad that I have family. Because without family, none of what I went through would have been possible. Vanilla iced coffee, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. look at my family and I see the future and I know now that I'm the one to lead them into that future I know now that I have a lot of weight on my shoulders but it's always up to me I'm the oldest and I'm gonna ensure that everything that I learned during this experience I apply that knowledge and that I always show love to my family because without my family what am I without family what are we you see this journey was not just about Nicaragua or just about New York or just about culture this journey was about family and if there's anything I learned from this journey is that if you're real and true to your family your family will be real and true to you so enjoy your family, tell your family you love them. And that's what this journey is about. The human interaction, human connection. It's about family.
feel like I'm carrying the whole weight of the world on both of my two shoulders. Hey, I'll be alright though. Hop in the throwback and ride all night. Go get a good grip on life. Not letting it go, cause you know it's real tight though. Take what I've been given, the good with the bad though. Get ready for next day's fight though. The sky's the limit, and I'm in it to win. Nothing can stop me. Tick tock, but y'all really can't see me. I don't take flight though. Nicolaccio! Yeah.